What's up, guys? Welcome back to Scarlet and Great Five Days Until Buckeye Football. Last time I talked to you, there was no football. Now there has been. Magic. See how that works? Pretty cool, huh? I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of the football games on Saturday. And this this is officially football week for the Ohio State. So I'm sure you guys are all jacked up about it. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you. The Monday morning edition of Bucks and Brew. You know we got our coffee. You know we're ready to get going in here. We're ready to kick off the work week right. If you got to go to work Monday, you may as well stop and listen to a little bit of Buckeye talk. So please help us grow this channel to get to 5,700 subscribers. By the Indiana kickoff, we're going to talk here just a minute about Notre Dame. Are the Buckeyes fans scared of Notre Dame already because they had that impressive showing on Saturday? Uh, so we're over 5,600 subscribers already. Just a few more. We'll get to 5,700. I think we can do it. If you want free Buckeye content all season long, please subscribe to this channel. And something that you guys have been enjoy doing that I've been enjoying is comment where you are watching from. A little bit of a roll call your location inside of Ohio, outside of Ohio. If you're outside of Ohio, give me your hometown. I love seeing there's fellow small town Buckeye people. I'm from a small village outside of Dayton, Ohio. Spent my junior high and high school years in Southern Ohio out in the sticks. So, Comment below, and I will I'll be sure to try and reply best I can. I usually get to most of them. All right, Buckeye fans, are you afraid of Notre Dame? Are you afraid of Notre Dame after that impressive showing? I think, you know, you look and see the improvements being made and, and that that game was essentially over at halftime. I, I think well, there's a case to be made that um, this is not – Last year's Notre Dame team. I think Corey, Corey's probably scared to death. Corey's probably looking at this game and going, you know, well, and he's probably very, very just terrified that the, the defense is not going to hold up against uh, what looks like a competent passing attack finally from Notre Dame. Did you guys think that this year's team looked better uh, than last year's. I'd like your comment on that. Yes, or just a wire in on do you think that Notre Dame looked more impressive than they do last year? I'm going to say I think they did. I mean, you look at Sam Hartman and see how much better uh, they are. I think you could see last year their offense seemed so limited, especially when we played them. It was, you know, simple run plays you the, to, to get some sort of creativity you run receiver in motion uh you fake a lot of sweeps and uh still and then you kind of almost run what looks like to be a read option off of that just wrinkles in the run game but they didn't have this mauling run game that you could be that one dimensional you have michael Mayer as uh you know pass catcher it's a good pass catcher it's hard though when uh, your your quarterback is limited and your tight end is your biggest weapon. Uh, it's and most tight ends don't get really far downfield. You know Brock Bowers is kind of special that he can get pretty far downfield before the passes are thrown. So um, you see the limitations there, and you're looking now uh, new offensive coordinator for Notre Dame, uh, new quarterback. It seemed to be those were the things they were missing to get even better in contention, right? So, um, I think that the Irish are better. I think that we can clearly look and see the Irish are better. Now, the Buckeyes should be better, too. The Buckeyes should be much better, too. Uh, you know, offensively, no JSN last year, and they probably had him as big part of the game plan. He got injured, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it was week one, and the big thing that we can talk about this last year and uh, even Notre Dame this year, week one lies. Week one is probably some of the worst football you'll play, in my experience. A lot of times you'll see a team, you know, a great team, a team that is top 10 at the end of the year, and they perform really poorly week one, even week one or two. And you, you still got to work the kinks out. You saw how USC's defense struggled in the first half against, uh, I think it was San Diego State. 
Looking into the second half, things got much better. Week one usually lies and not in a good way. It usually will make you seem worse than you are. So is this Navy team really, really bad? Because if week one makes you seem worse than you are, and Notre Dame really looked pretty impressive as as much as you can be. I know the Navy may not be a good team, but I mean, Notre Dame did what they were supposed to and absolutely dominated them much worse than people thought much worse than I thought. And they did it in week one. So there's something to be said about it. You look last year, uh, Ohio state, you know, Notre Dame scores 10 points. Ohio state puts up 21 uh, and kind of a slow game that the offense really need to work its kinks out in. However, that offense against good defenses last year wasn't that high-powered. Um, besides the Georgia game, there was no uh, good defense they faced where they really started, you know, putting up a lot of points. So, um, you know, Iowa, but you could see how long that took. That game was disappointing for, you know, two and a half quarters. Uh, so, week one, you look a couple of years ago at Minnesota, it took Ohio State a full half to get going. Uh, so week one will lie to you. You look, at, they struggle with Notre Dame last year for a while. Ohio State does. The next week, Notre Dame goes on to really struggle against, Mar or maybe even lose against Marshall. That's how, I mean, that <laughs> you, you see why week one is just kind of this weird thing that you got to be careful with. That's why I think it's fairly impressive what Notre Dame did. And then when we do play Notre Dame, you get them and we, it will be their fifth game of the year. Fifth game of the year. Fourth game of the year for us, five for them. I mean, that's midseason. They're going to be in midseason form. I think this is a flat out a bigger challenge than last year. I don't think it calls for fear necessarily, but this is a different ball club. It's not. I think I went into it this year thinking it was almost a guaranteed dub. Not so fast, my friend, right? The, the team looks like it's going to be revamped and it's going to be uh, picked up on. Their weaknesses are a large part going to be shored up. I don't know how good their defense is. Navy had no way to test their secondary. Um, and honestly, you know, the size, the, the size up front, it's going to be hard to know how, how that's tested. You know, Notre Dame wants to run the ball. Navy defensively is going to be um, well coached usually, but not very big. Uh, I, I think their offensive line will be good. Um, our defensive line, I think, will be very good. But Notre Dame consistently has pretty good offensive lines. So I'm going to say that's going to be good. Uh, I just don't – the pass game is going to be much improved. I don't know if it's going to be great. It's going to be much improved. I don't see how it couldn't be. So the lining up, Ohio State's going to have to be prepared. I don't know if you need to be trembling in your boots like Corey is. And he's, I don't know if you got to be like that. But you do probably need to have some cause for concern. And there's always outliers. Going to South Bend, you know, it's going to be a road game. I expect Buckeye Nation to travel really, really well, but it is going to be a road game. Still in the month of September, so uh, anything can go. I expect us not to be running two quarterbacks by then. By then, you're going to have um, either one guy, it, you know, if if it's still, if coaches are demanding a, a, a rep split, then I would I expect a McCord to probably say, well, burn my red shirt. Um, to do this, or if uh, uh, and then you'd have Devin Brown as quarterback, or if McCord's named the outright starter by then, uh, you, you'd have your answer there. So one way or another, I think we'll be down to one quarterback that game, which will be helpful. You have a lot more running back depth this year, um, although that will be four games in. I do expect my Williams or Trey Henderson to already be injured by that point in the season. Uh, I'm not, I'm just saying that's kind of usually how it goes. Uh, so you can look at, but we have Evan Pryor, we have Chip, we have other guys that are really stepping up down Hayden. Great, great young players. Uh, so I think Ohio State's depth will really show out in that game, but it's not a gimme anymore. Marcus Freeman did a good, a good job shoring up uh, what looked like to be um, some of their weaknesses. Uh, I just I don't think this will be a, a game of imposing SEC talent across the board by any means 
where that way it might be calls for more concern. I still think this is a winnable game for the Buckeyes, extremely winnable, but it's, it's a game that, you know, you, you may even have to force a comeback in. Um, you may have to, to, you know, start slow or, or put up with a slow start there. That's going to be a big jump in competition when Ohio state is going to ha- come off of Indiana and uh, some non-Power 5 schools after that before Notre Dame, I think that is going to be one of those cases where the competition ju- the competition jump might uh, shock both teams a little bit. It could, Who knows? It could shock both teams. I think Ohio State's the more talented club, so early in the season that's going to favor Notre Dame to you know, uh, to shock the system, to get both teams a little bit shocked. That it might narrow the gap briefly, but – at the end of the day, the Buckeyes recruit better. I think they're better coached. Um, at least, you know, uh, offensively they are. So I expect um, things to be still favoring the Buckeyes. I expect the Buckeyes to be favored at kickoff in that game. I wonder what you guys are thinking. Do you guys, are, are you scared? How are you feeling? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I think the Buckeyes could still win this game, should win this game. But you look at uh, Marcus Freeman being a defensive head coach. I understand that defense will be stiff test. And also understand, again, um, you you got a guy in Sam Hartman. He can extend plays with his legs. He is a good passer. I don't think he's Joe Burrow. I don't think he's C.J. Stroud, et cetera. But he's a good passer. He's good enough that you can't, you can't just leave people open. You know, I would say he's at least a J.J. McCarthy good pass probably maybe a little better passer than jj mccarthy um he'll be good enough to where you have to respect the throw game and and you can't just stack the box so notre dame coming with some more balance that is that's something that the jim jim Knowles is going to kind of have questions uh answered that game right we're gonna know do we have a guy that can do both do, or is the secondary still going to be a big problem? Or now all of a sudden do we have a run problem? Because Notre Dame has always liked to to, to pound the, the football. And you're going to see that put to the test. So I am interested. Are you afraid of Notre Dame? I don't think this is cause for fear. But they did everything they should have done. And the Buckeyes do not have a gimme game coming up September 23rd. I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully we'll have a Wednesday edition of Bucks and Brew and to have some more things brewing for you coming up this week. Thank you so much for watching. As always, goodbye, God bless, and go Bucks.